14 August 2021, rainfall was witnessed at the National Science Foundation's summit station near the highest point on the Greenland ice sheet. There is no previous report of rainfall at this location, 3,200 meters in altitude. The driver of rainfall was a so-called atmospheric river. This Greenland atmospheric river produced extreme ice sheet snow cover changes and high river discharge. The study brings in measurements from several sources. First, from three satellite missions. Snow and ice darkness is measured by cameras on Sentinel-3. Higher resolution photographic images of surface flooding are measured by Sentinel-2. And snow wetness is measured by AMSER-2. We bring in automatic weather station data, including measurements from the Summit Greenland AWS that I installed alone one night in 1996, raised up each three or four years to not get buried by the net snow accumulation at the upper elevations of the ice sheet. The AWS data used here come from two networks, the US and Swiss sponsored Greenland Climate Network that I helped establish in the 1990s and 2000s. And the Danish PromIce network established in 2007. Both networks are now carried forward by the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland. And we bring in meltwater discharge measurements from a large river flowing out from the ice sheet. The river measurements are particularly useful to independently gauge the impact of the atmospheric river. This southwestern region of interest is where the biggest impacts of the atmospheric river occur. The blue line is the satellite observation of albedo before the heat wave where we have snow line at about 700 meters elevation. And then you can see albedo going up and staying high at these upper elevation sites. The ground observations confirm that the satellite is measuring albedo accurately. Then the heat wave hits and the albedo drops down to bare ice values at Canel Nuku along southwestern Greenland here. And it's only above 1500 meters where the albedo is above snow values. So the bare ice shifts from about 700 meters all the way up to 1500 meters as this atmospheric river erases the snow cover between these elevations. And then above the snow line, the albedo still drops by about 0.1. So this snow at Kanyu, Daitu, and across the southern ice sheet is reflecting about 10% less sunlight. And because of this darkened state and the fact that the surface is at the melting point, it means that that additional sunlight can go into melting. And it's an excellent example of the albedo feedback. Lower down the ice sheet at Can M, the energy fluxes are much larger. The heat wave delivers a melt energy above 200 watts per square meter sustained. The net turbulent flux you can see is peaking higher around 200 watts per square meter. So all of these energy fluxes are remaining positive for the initial part of the heat wave so the melting at this elevation adds up to almost half a meter. So it's a huge amount of ice loss, half a meter around this elevation band of the ice sheet. The albedo drops from a snow value around 0.8. So this is the loss of snow cover that then during the rainy period drops down to just above 0.2. This is extremely dark surface, very likely 
flooding at the surface, standing water. Later on, during the albedo feedback phase, you can see the net long wave is negative. So the absorbed shortwave radiation, the sunlight, these orange curves, they are extremely high. They are contributing almost the entirety of the melt energy. You can see that there is slightly less melt energy because of the energy sink from the clear sky conditions. So there's energy radiating away from the surface. Nevertheless, the positive air temperatures indicate that any surplus energy goes into melting. And so had this surface stayed snow covered, the ice ablation would have been more than half smaller. So the darkening effect doubles the actual melt because of this effect of the loss of a bright snow cover. So even though the heat wave in the atmospheric river delivers, say, 84 plus 156, this is about 200 millimeters of melt, the melt that accumulates during the clear sky conditions is almost as large. And so this is an excellent example of the effect of a darkening surface on amplifying the initial perturbation, this intense uh, delivery of heat, but it, it's gone after a few days, but its effect is sustained. The summit of the Greenland Ice Sheet, 3,254 meters above sea level, central Greenland, formerly known as the dry snow area of the ice sheet. The Greenland Climate Network Automatic Weather Station, you can see equipped with an albedo sensor, air temperature, surface height, featured in the graph to the left, where during this heat wave, temperatures just reached the melting point. They stayed above melting for not more than eight hours. Prior to the heating, you can see the surface height record indicates snow accumulation up to 20 centimeters that quickly starts to blow around. And during the rainfall, there's an interesting gradient of humidity uh, with the upper level humidity being higher than the humidity below. This indicates that there's a gradient of moisture toward the ground, likely condensation. Not surprising during this episode in which rainfall is witnessed, but not recorded. The thing is, we had anticipated rainfall across the ice sheet. That's why we were rolling out these rain gauges. We didn't go ahead and set up at Summit because the equipment there is working and there are a lot of logistical constraints about arriving to the Summit station so we left the measurements running and got rain gauges installed at like five other locations it's a pity though that we didn't actually get the rainfall measurements going here however we did estimate the rainfall at this location using a photograph of the ice layer that came from the rainfall we can see that during the heating episode the albedo drops from a high value of 0.85 by about 0.1, that's a substantial albedo drop. During the wet conditions, the albedo returns to high values, presumably as these uh, moderate winds are blowing the snow around. South Dome, 2,893 meters above sea level, normally high and dry. And just a few days after we had installed this next generation automatic weather station with two rain gauges, it recorded rain. You can see humidity maxing out saturated air at the time of the arrival of the atmospheric river. Air temperatures above melting before the saturated air. That's an important part of the story because we see the heating effects of the atmospheric river as having really the big impact. The rain, it's very much a visible effect of the atmospheric river, 
but it's really the heat that this study finds is the largest source of impact. During the atmospheric river uh, and the heating effect, especially prior to rain, we already see a deflation of the snow cover at the surface by 10 centimeters. The heating and the uh, rainfall lead to further deflation. You can see a pause in deflation at a time when the air temperatures are getting lower. And so an overall deflation of 20 centimeters of this snow cover at South Dome. 